Hello all, in this short podcast I want to show you how to use Excel to find the correlation coefficient R, otherwise known as the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. In this data set I have two columns, fat percentage 1 and fat percentage 2 respectively known as variable X and Y. The correlation coefficient actually has as its main purpose finding the strength of a relationship or a a binary or bivariate relationship between two numerical variables. In this case, FET percentage uh, 1 and 2 are two numerical variables. We have 23 observations. FET percentage 1 is in one column, FET percentage 2 in, is in another column. As we know, the formula to find out correlation coefficient R is right here on the right side which is the sum of squares of x and y divided by the square root of sum of squares of x times sum of squares of y. All of these factors have their own formula. So sum of squares of x has this formula right here, uh, y has that formula over there, and x and y has that formula over there too. Uh, by the way, this should be um, sum of squares of y. Let me fix that right now. So now we have to find out all of these columns that we have here. The first column is finding out the result of the multiplication of x and y. The second column is uh, x squared and the third column is y squared. Then we're going to find out all the totals and sums uh, necessary to actually get the sum squares of x, sum squares of y, and sum squares of x and y, and then derivatively finding the r. Let's start with the sum of, sum of the multiplication of x and y. By the way, this is a table. I've created a table. You can see that there is, um, next to each column header, a drop-down list. So that means that this is a table. To actually create a table, you just put the columns in, right? Go into the Home tab, and then go to Styles, and then go to Format Table, and then select any one of these formats. I've chosen this blue one, okay? Uh, using tables is very, very uh, helpful in Excel, in Excel because once you do one calculation, the table will automatically fill out the calculation in that column for you. Let's see. I go to the first cell of the third column here and then click on the equal sign, type in equal sign because that's how the formula starts, right? And then get the x times y. Now times is this particular asterisk right here, okay? You can find that in the numeric keypad is the asterisk or when you hit shift and eight, number eight. Okay, so that's the multiplication sign in Excel. Hit enter. Once I hit enter, you, you, you're going to see that all of this column will be filled out automatically. Okay, see that? For example, in uh, observation number 13, um, this result here of x times y is x 20 times 16 y. That's 320. Let's do the x squared. Equal sign x times itself, that's x squared, enter, and then I get the, the result in this column. And y squared is sort of the same thing, but just using the y, equals y times itself, y, enter, and then I have all the x times y, all x squared, and all y squared. Another thing I need to do is find this sum of x's, because I want this to square that sum. So all of the x's are right here. So sum is on the bottom row, which is the total row. By the way, you can go to the Design tab, right, and then click on the total row, which is automatically will fill out the, the total for you. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is that you can use the function sum equals su, and then sum. Select the whole column of x's, hit enter, and that's the sum, right? Or you can use the function within the uh, total row, which is this drop down this right here, click on the sum, and then you get the sum of all y's. Now I want to get the sum of all xy's, and I want to get the sum of all x squares, and the sum of all y squares. Okay, so I have all the sums. But in the formula over here, I need to square the sum of x's, and I need to square the sum of y's. So what I need to do here, go into this particular cell, Click on, uh, type in equal sign, sum of x's times itself is all sum of x's squared. 
the same thing for sum of y's. I want to square that. Equals sum of y's times itself. That's all sum of, of y's squared. Okay. And one other thing I need to do here is to find out the multiplication be, be, between sum of all x's and sum of all y's. So equal sign. Okay. Sum of all x's is right here times sum of all y's. And now I have that right here. So in this particular uh, area of the table or, or the sheet, I have sum of x's squared, sum of y's squared, sum of all x and y's, sum of all x squared, sum of all y squared, and sum uh, of x's times sum of square, uh, y's right here. While I have all of these, I can find now the sum of squares of x, sum of squares of y, and sum of squares of x and y, because that's what's needed to find the a correlation coefficient r. So sum of squares of x, okay, is this formula right over here on the right side. So I'm going to type in equal sign, okay, and I'm going to do the sum of all x squared, which is this number right here on the bottom, minus sum of all x squared, which is this number here, divided by n, which is 23. Hit enter, and I have sum of all a sum of squares of x. Sum of squares of y equals sum of all y squared, which is this number here, 75, 28, minus sum of all y's, right, squared, divided by 23. And that's the sum of squares of y's. What about sum of squares of x and y? I have now equal sign sum of square, uh, sum of all x and y's, which is this number here, 82, 46, right? Minus sum of x is times sum, sum of y's, which is this number right over here, divided by 23, and this is sum of squares of x and y. Okay. There's another calculation I need to do here. The square root of sum of squares of x times sum of squares of y. Okay, that's the denominator. So what I first need to do here is click on or type in equal sign and then do the function sqrt, which is square root. Square root of what? Square root of multiplication of sum of squares of x with sum of squares of y. So sum of squares of x is right here, times sum of squares of y right here, and now this is the no, uh, denominator square root of uh, ssx times ssy. Okay, what about r? r now, r equals, right, equal sign, is sum of squares of x and y, which is this number here, right, divided by the square root of ssx times ssy, which is this one right here. Okay, so this is uh, the correlation coefficient r, okay, 0 0.2912. What I will do right now, I will just um, make that um, only with three decimal places, although uh, as a notation you can actually round the correlation coefficient r to the nearest hundred, which is going to be probably 0 0.29 in this case, but I will put, I will leave it with three decimal places right now. So three things I can, I can tell here from this correlation coefficient. One, there exists a binary or linear correlation between Fed percentage 1 and Fed percentage 2, which is uh, the Fed percentage in June and Fed percentage in September, respectively, after some treatment has uh, been going on. Okay, so there is. Why? Because the correlation coefficient is not zero. Okay. Two, there is a positive correlation. Since the R is a positive number, 0 0.29, that means that we have a positive correlation as one um, in the variable increases, so does the other. If this was a negative correlation coefficient, then we could say that we have a negative correlation. As one increases, the other decreases. And three, and most important thing, is that we can tell the strength of this linear relationship. This is really not very strong. This is a weak correlation between these two variables. We've said that uh, from zero to 0.3 or negative 0.3, we have a very weak correlation, either positive or negative respectively. 
from 0.3 to 0.6, we have a somewhat strong correlation, or 0. Uh, 0 to 0. negative 0.3 to negative 0.6, somewhat strong negative correlation. And then if R is greater than 0. 0.6 or smaller than negative 0. 0.6, going towards 1 or minus 1 respectively, then we have a strong positive correlation or a negative correlation uh, depending on the sign. So in this case, we can just tell that there is a correlation between these two variables, but that correlation is somewhat weak. And that's how you can use Excel to find out the correlation coefficient when you have the sum of squares of x and y, sum of squares of x and sum of squares of y. Okay.